We just heard from the people of West Virginia about how they believe coal in, the coal industry is improving under President Trump. But might President Trump be too late anyway? One of the biggest users of the fossil fuel world is turning its back on coal. American Electric Power supplies electricity to 5 million customers in 11 states and has steadily reduced its reliance on coal over the last dozen or so years. Ultimately, it will go, I guess, up to about right now 47 percent. It will eventually go down to 35 uh, percent. Simultaneously, though, AEP is increasing its use of water, wind and solar renewables by 28 percent. Going so far now as to invest four and a half billion dollars on wind power by building a gigantic wind farm in Oklahoma with turbines similar to these ones that you see that are already owned by the company. The CEO and chairman of AEP, Nick Akins, is here in a Fox Business exclusive. So, Nick, welcome back. Great to have you. Let's be clear. Great to be with you, Liz. Thank you. you Great to be with you. You haven't entirely abandoned coal. Forty-seven percent of your energy sources right. still come from it. But you're moving in now what appears to be a different direction. Tell us why. Yeah, Liz, I think you're seeing a rebalancing of the entire portfolio of this nation from a fuel resource perspective. Coal is a big part, a large part of the, of the portfolio. It's changed over time because now you have other resources that are available as well. Uh, obviously, natural gas, uh, the shale gas activity, all the pipeline activity associated with that has been beneficial. And as well, renewables, energy efficiency, mm -hmm. transmission, all these are different types of resources that are coming into play today uh, that weren't really available uh, back when coal was king. Uh, there's an inclination to blame, and in part maybe it is fair blame, the Obama administration who put down very tough regulations, and a lot of them. However, mm -hmm. I need to ask you flat out, can Donald Trump turn this gigantic ship around, or are you guys already looking forward through the front windshield versus the rearview mirror at coal? Yeah, I think it's I think it's more of a question of preservation of of, of existing coal. Coal is picked up uh, slightly because of the metallurgical aspects of it related to steel manufacturing that was mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. But as far as thermal coal, which is used for burning of coal in our power stations, it'll be a very difficult proposition unless something changes from an economic standpoint with natural gas and other forms of resources. I, I really see. Uh, uh, coal stabilizing, maybe going down slightly in the future. It's still a, a large part of the portfolio, but in the future, additional incremental investments will be made in natural gas, renewables, technologies uh, that drive energy efficiency. Okay, that leads me to this. When people ask you, was it politics that turned its back on coal, or was it the free market at work? What say you to that question? Because the, everyone's saying Donald Trump can bring it back. President Obama tried to kill coal. Is it really that simple that it's just politics, or is it the fact that other sources are now a lot cheaper? It certainly is both. Um, certainly from a regulatory standpoint, it increased the risk of, of any new development of coal-fired generation, and certainly the incremental risk that evolved over time related to the environmental aspects of coal have continued to detract from the economics. But when you add to that, the, the issue associated with natural gas being so low from a pricing perspective and becoming so prevalent in this nation, it's a viable competitor and continues to compete, so you're seeing a rebalancing associated with that. That'll continue. And then as well, you bring in the technology mm -hmm. aspects around energy yeah. efficiency, big data analytics around the grid itself to drive efficiencies that we couldn't do before. Well, That's going to change dramatically this? the ability to bring additional resources to bear. Uh, the cost of natural gas, and I've watched it for a long time, at one point it was near $14 per million British thermal units. Today, I don't even know what it's doing, but it's probably around two and change. Yep, $2.80. But we can, show, yeah, we can show where it used to be. So if that becomes a lot cheaper and it's cleaner, how much does that play into what you choose to rebalance that portfolio of energy that you use? Yeah, it's a huge part of the decision because you can build a natural gas station in two years. A coal station will take seven years if you can get it done. And then secondly, the price per KW or the price to build it is about a billion per a natural gas unit, but it can be upwards to five, five billion for, for a coal-fired station. So if you look at the fuel cost differential and they're consistent, 
about the same, then uh, obviously you're going to make the decision to go toward natural gas because it's less risk for the investor. Yeah, yeah. And certainly from a fuel cost perspective, the customers benefit. Well, it's fascinating to watch. And, uh, you know, as we go, yeah. I look at your stock, and you've been pretty, pretty close to a, an I guess a 52 week high here, which is 72. You're at 71 for AEP. And right. uh, there it goes $71. And that's a three month picture, but the uh, one year looks a lot better, certainly. Thank you so much. It's good to see you, Nick. Absolutely. Thank you, Liz. Do me a favor come back when we have some of those uh, subsidies for clean energy that are going away, and we can talk about how you handle that. We'll do that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Good to see you, Nick. Thank you very much. Uh,